The Petit Soldat was shot in uh, 1960, uh, but it was not uh, released until 1963. Uh, the reason for that, that it was that it was banned by the French government. It's very difficult, uh, nearly 50 years on, uh, to imagine why uh, a film like this was banned. But you have to cast your mind back to a time when France was fighting the most vicious of colonial wars, a war in Algeria, which in the late 50s dominated French political life and dominated ordinary life as well. Every young man uh, had the uh, 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 reality of going to serve for three years uh, in a bitter uh, and savage war, a war which invented both modern torture and modern terror terrorism, a kind of precursor of many of the wars that we are more familiar with. Funnily enough, French film had not dealt with this topic at all. There is no film where you will find uh, a mention of Algeria. So when Godard chose to make his second film directly about the fights between uh, right and left and the Algerian conflict, fights fought on the neutral ground of Switzerland, he was stepping onto very dangerous political ground. He'd chosen Geneva as the setting for his film because it was his hometown, and he felt that he could make a film even cheaper there than he could in Paris, and he persuaded his producer, uh, Beauregard, uh, to go along with him. The story is a story of Bruno Forestier, uh, uh, a member of the right-wing OAS, the organization dedicated to keeping Algeria French. But the images and the discourses are all of those of the left, those of the engagement in the civil war in Spain 20 years earlier, those of figures like André Marot. And the film is all about the impossibility of such political commitment. But politics, in some ways, provides only the subtext. One can see Godard's prescience in the way in which torture and death are dealt out in apartments of stunning banality. But what the film is really about is about love, and love not just of the lead character for the girl, but of the director for the girl. When Godard was looking for his lead, he put an advertisement in a trade paper saying that the director was looking for a lead actress and a girlfriend. The request was obvious. Anna Karina, was a young woman who had come to Paris from Denmark and had made a very successful start as a modeling career. Godard had already tried to cast her in uh, Breathless uh, in a smaller part, but as it involved undressing, Karina had refused. Godard summoned her again with a note which said, this time it's for the lead. And after a great deal of trouble, because Karina was still a minor and it required her mother's consent, she became the star of his second film. Her boyfriend accompanied her on the shoot, but that was to no avail. Halfway but into the shoot, uh, Godard and Karina uh, became lovers and were subsequently to marry. If you look at the film, you can actually feel yourself falling in love as the camera captures the beauty of this young Danish woman's face, caught up in this sordid world of terrorist uh, crime and punishment.